uh, I was always looking for um, oneness and unity and dedicated my life before this training to, to try to find this because I believed that that's what would sort out all of my problems. Now, I had no idea what oneness or unity was, so how on earth would I ever know if I encountered it? But that's besides the point. But, um, so that was basically two decades of extreme vagueness looking for something that I didn't really know what it was. But the basic premise of that search was that unity, it doesn't include anger, it doesn't include sexual desire, it doesn't include violence. In fact, it doesn't include anything I consider to be um, wrong. It must just be all nice and fluffy and golden light, angels singing, people walking around watering pot plants, all of that stuff. <laughs> and um, it doesn't include any of the nasty things. So, so I was looking for unity um, based on my experience of conventional life. And everyone else I met who was on that search was doing the same thing. They believed, even though they thought they were looking for something exalted, they were essentially looking for what we look for in conventional life, which is to not experience things we don't like and to have more of the things that we really do like and hold on to them. Does that sound familiar? Now, if we were to take a poll in this room of the top 10 things that we really like and the top 10 things we really dislike, do you think we would all have the same lists? And do you think that somebody might have something on their top 10 likes that you really dislike? Mm -hmm. Yes, that's, that is what would happen. <laughs> now, what we try to do as individuals is we try to find peace in ourselves and with other people by having the same lists. <laughs> now, have you, have you noticed, like, like, when you fall in love with somebody, your perfect partner, it's like... <laughs> It's like, wow, we, we, we have the same list. We're, we're the same. We're, we're meant for each other. It's, it's just so wonderful. And the sex is perfect. It's more than perfect. But absolutely, the perfect sexual experience is not enough, for sure. One, one time's not enough. And, um, but then what happens? Two weeks later, your lists are slightly different. Hmm. How did that happen? And maybe the sex is still amazing, but it's not as perfect as that first time. And then a year later, it's like your partner has your top ten dislike list as their, you know, like, and, and, and all, all of the things that you found so endearing and so wonderful, actually, you know, they drive you absolutely crazy. And so this is a great example of, firstly, first of all, the dynamic Spontane spontaneity of what we call in this training data. <laughs> so the term data we use in this training to describe anything you can experience as a human being. Thoughts, emotions, sensations, other people, places and things. It just makes it very easy. So that would be a very powerful example of how <coughs> something that seems so important and so precious can somehow magically over time transmute into something that's not so precious and maybe even annoying. And then w what do you do? You either blame your partner, blame yourself, and my experience is you're looking for another partner. Because that, that is where happiness is located. So, okay, so I, I stopped seeing this partner, I got my new partner, oh my God, we've got the same list. <laughs> the sex is amazing. Two weeks later, same thing. One year later, okay, I need another partner. I have another partner, same list. Da, 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 da. How long are we going to fall for that ridiculous charade? Six times, ten times, a hundred times? Because believe me, it doesn't stop. Uh, we have a friend um, whose, whose mother, this is quite, quite a few years ago, she was in her 90s, and she, she, uh, she shared with her daughter that she just, she just met a toy boy, he was 86. <laughs> and, and she finished the letter saying, I think he's the one. <laughs> so you see, this, this, 
is searching for well-being in, in an idea that doesn't provide well-being is, is insanity. You know, we, how, how, how many times are you going to fall for that, really? And that's, that's a very powerful and maybe, maybe the most powerful example for many people is the search for well-being in an intimate relationship. But that search for well-being by arranging our experience into what we like, it, it happens at every single level in our lives. You know, like maybe your boiled egg in the morning, it wasn't, it wasn't soft enough for you, or maybe it was too soft. Now I know for sure that something like that, when I, before this training, would, would ruin my entire day. <laughs> you know, I'd be blaming the person that made the egg, whether that was me or, or somebody else. And, and, um, and then I'd be thinking about other things that this person had done that had made me angry. And then I'd be off on the bus in London going to work, fuming, all because of a, a boiled egg. And, I, and, and I'm really, I'm not, I'm not making this up. Like the, the, the things that used to make my, ruin my day were, were so in, inconsequential. And, and, and the great thing about this training is, is and what we do here, is that we, we clearly show experientially that the, the, the great motivation through conventional life to find well-being by rearranging your thoughts, emotions, sensations and experiences is a ridiculous waste of time. It's, it will never end. You will never get anywhere. That, you all know that. But we, 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 we don't have, we don't have uh, any other options. So what, what do we do? We don't look at the hamster wheel and, and say, this hamster wheel, you know, I can run as fast as I like for as long as I like, and I'm really not getting anywhere. And just because everyone else is doing it, you know, they're not getting anywhere either. So the problem isn't me. The problem is the hamster wheel. <laughs> you know, so, but, but, but I, I, I didn't do that. I looked at myself and said, okay, <laughs> There must, there must be a way of making this hamster wheel thing work. I must be able to get somewhere on it. It's my fault. I need to try harder. I need to get another partner. I need to get a better job. I need more money. I need to meditate more. You know, just on and on and on. But all the while, it's a hamster wheel. You know, like, wake up. And so this training allows you very, 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 very practically to actually see what's going on. So we have a whole program of trainings to do that. Very, very simple trainings. And, and this is what this practice is all about, is being open enough to test the simple suggestions that are put forward and see what happens in your, in your experience. And that's all I did. And so when I work, walked into my first Balance View Open meeting, it sounded similar to many, many things that I've been involved in before, but immediately I was given uh, the introduction, like we heard, to open intelligence as an experience. So what we call open intelligence in the Balanced View training, you, it doesn't matter what you call it. We used to call it awareness or clarity, openness, alertness. I actually like what's looking. That, that for me, that's a very, very powerful description. What's looking through your eyes right now? What's listening to me? So in this training, we call this open intelligence. And to directly experience that right now, just stop thinking, stop describing. And that, that what's looking becomes very obvious. So it's clear you, you already have this. Now the practice of balanced view is to relax and acknowledge that <coughs> open intelligence whenever you remember. Short moments of open intelligence repeated many times become continuous. It's not about recognizing open intelligence okay i stop thinking and then i stop thinking i stop thinking i stop thinking i stop thinking and you know like the incorrectly cooked boiled egg will come back into your mind stream almost immediately or some other thought or sensation so the the many times is very important it's uncontrived recognition of the basis of what makes us human beings and it's so simple, we've spent our entire lives focusing on the descriptions of our lives, what we like, what we don't like, and thinking, 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 describing, 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 endlessly. So when we recognise we're doing that, we just stop and we relax and acknowledge open intelligence. And then we repeat that whenever we remember. And what you'll find is the most amazing thing. It's, it's your own thoughts, 
your own life, your own circumstances that provide you with the opportunity to make that choice. So right immediately you see you don't have to do anything, you don't have to change anything. Amazing. Look, I'd like to get, I'm with child. <laughs> And it, it's really, the, the camera never lies. It looks much worse on the camera. And, uh, you know, and I'd, I'd really quite like to, you know, not have a space hopper strapped to the front of my body. But I, I don't have any choice. And um, you see, so this would be something that really, really obsessed me before this training. The way I look and I need to look a certain way. And if I can look a certain way, then I'll get my perfect partner and then people will respect me more. And, and all of this stuff. So that would be an example of getting lost in a description. I'm sitting here, I look like a pregnant woman. I, I you know, I need to be, you know, whatever, maybe I, I cut out the, the broccoli and cauliflower. That tends to make my little boy a bit bigger. But, um, you know, so, so relentlessly, always self-referencing everything back to, the, to my, my tiny selection of thoughts and experiences in life. So if I was walking down the beach, you know, walking along, walking along, all nice and casual, and then someone I see is coming along, it's quite attractive, it's, it's immediately <gasps> <laughs> like that, and then <sighs> afterwards, and then you can, you can walk, you can get relaxed, you know, just all, 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 all reference back to this ridiculous game and, and the thoughts and everything, but now, the, the the choice is prov is provided, like to to to, to 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 basically make the choice to relax. So anything that comes up, especially things I find, you know, really difficult. So prior to this training, I had uh, I was very depressed. I was very bored, very anxious. I had panic attacks. Lots of things that you would consider to be negative. And through this simple training, I had had the actual experience, not an idea, but the experience that my depression is open and vast like the sky. My anger is open and vast like the, the sky. The, my, <laughs> my baby boy is open and vast like the sky <laughs> and is evidence of my perfection. It's, it, and, and so we have many beautiful metaphors in the training, like um, open intelligence and data are inseparable like the sky and the colour blue or open intelligence and data are inseparable like uh, the reflections in a mirror. And so these are very powerful uh, metaphors to describe the relationship between everything you experience and your capacity to experience open intelligence. So what you'll find is by practicing short moments and then using the other supports too, which I'll, I'll describe briefly in a moment, your actual experience of everything that you experience that you, you know, your thoughts, emotions and sensations, they too are that openness. They are what's looking. There, there, there is no difference. This is the unity that I was always looking for. It's, it's it, it, the, 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 uh, the evidence of that is me. It's me and my thoughts and my emotions. Not as a philosophy, as an experience. And this is what this practice is all about. It's not about thinking about what's, what I'm saying or what you hear and then th saying, well, yeah, it's a little bit like this, it's a little bit like th this other training. And it's really about getting on the bike and testing it and seeing if you like it. <laughs> so obvious. Now, the more embarrassed I, I get because I'm not saying anything, the more obvious open intelligence is as that embarrassment. That's where the power is, you see. So we, if we've spent our, our life and that drive to, to, to look for something is so beautiful because you know what that drive is? It's the drive to really find your true self and find the meaning of reality. And the problem is, is we, we think that we need to find that by rearranging our experience climbing in the hamster wheel. But actually, what we're looking for, what we're, what we're desperately, desperately yearning for is already present. And it is the experience of open intelligence. Now that might seem, so for example, just try stopping thinking again. You find, you, you recognize open intelligence and it's like, well, 
it, yeah, it's it's open. Is is it really the thing I'm looking for? What I'm actually looking for is a, a really fast motorbike, maybe, and my football team to be really successful. I think that will that will make me feel more fulfilled, which is absolutely a load of rubbish, actually. But you see, the point is, is that our our, our fundamental basis. It is inseparable from everything. It is everything. And so that, that simple practice of short moments will allow you to start to see in your own experience that this is true. Now, practically speaking, as a human being, what this means is, and this happens very quickly, is that you'll feel much more comfortable in your skin. You'll feel much more comfortable with other people. Much more relaxed, much less bothered by things that might have bothered you for your entire life. They still come up, but they have much less power. And the reason for that is because they have no power. They have no power, you've just been pretending like a little child. When I was little, I used to hide, you know, like, I, like this, or stick my head in a corner of a little a room and <laughs> convinced that nobody could see me. And, and my parents would pretend that they couldn't see me. You know, like, so, hey, where's Adrian? Where's Adrian? I'd just be there just going, <laughs> like really laughing really loudly. And uh, not, not, you know, not tw thinking for one minute that my enormous bottom is sticking out and they, and they can hear me. But that's, so, so you see, just because we've, we, we've been repeating, repeating to ourselves, that, that we are suffering, you know, I am, I am depressed, I am depressed, I'm a loser, I'm a loser, I'm a loser, I'm a loser, I'm, I hate myself, I hate myself, I hate myself. It doesn't make it true. It seems to be true because you've said it a million times and also you might have been to people in white coats who say, hmm, yes, you are depressed and you're depressed because your parents didn't take you on holiday enough. It's just like, pr can you prove that to me? Can, where is... Uh, how, where does it say that the number of holidays my parents take me on means I'm going to experience... It's just utter... It's ridiculous. Everything is ridiculous. Everything, everything that we take to be true is, is, is simply not the case. What is true is that everything we experience is a direct link to open intelligence and that's what you want to focus on. And if you're here for like just a few weeks, I really, really, from the heart, invite you back to open meetings. We have introductory trainings. Everything is geared towards your instinctive recognition of open intelligence. It's not, it's not trying to convince you of anything. It's to give you the experience of what is described in this training. So when we do trainings, we read texts, um, and, and if you're new, you probably won't understand a single word. It, 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 they're very, they're, they're the poetry of open intelligence. But the, the power in the text is that they elicit the experience of open intelligence. And it's the same with the media on the website. If you visit the website, there are there's some very, very clear introductory talks, probably hundreds, I think. And again, they're all designed that by listening to them, you experience open intelligence. It's, you know, like, and you can test it, and if it doesn't work, you don't have to come back. But I guarantee if you do, your life will change in, in the most amazing way. Because you start to recognise that what you were looking for is present as everything you've been experiencing up until this point. Totally amazing. I'm the same person I was before this training. My data is the same, but I, I, I cannot differentiate anymore between open intelligence and anything I experience, which I know sounds a bit weird, but basically what that means is I feel really, really happy, content, powerful, as being a miserable, fat, old git. <laughs> and that's not going to improve. No, for sure, that's going to get worse. And so to, to, to recognise this perfection is the greatest gift, and I'm so, I'm so grateful. The, the, the lady you heard speaking was Candice, she's the founder of the training and she essentially had an instinctive recognition of what we describe here and so she devoted her entire life to 
bringing this training to as many people as possible. So give it a go. You won't be disappointed. I, I, I guarantee you, you'll be amazed.